joining me now, Florida Congressman and member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Ron DeSantis. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. It's a terrible situation, but I really appreciate uh, the chance to get your perspective. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here. So let's start with, um, I guess there are two big questions um, that, that people are asking. First of all, what do you think should happen? And secondly, what, what, your, what you think might actually happen in practice. Let's start with your take on what the president's response should be to this latest attack, if that's what it turns out to be. President Trump in his tweet framed the issue exactly right. Yes, Assad is a thug, he is an animal, uh, but he's really a flunky of the Iranians and the Russians. And so you don't deal with Assad just in a vacuum. You got to look at his, the support that he's getting from the Iranians and from the Russians. And part of the problem with this uh, whole issue is that President Trump inherited a major mess, one of the biggest messes any president's ever inherited from Barack Obama's failed policy. He drew the red line, didn't enforce it. Then they claim they got all the, the chemical weapons out, but then we've seen chemical attacks since then. So I would say, look at Iran, look at Russia. Uh, that is really the root of the problem here, but also be mindful that it's such a mess, there's probably not a, an ultimate outcome that we can just will or bring in to, uh, to focus, uh, given all the really negative forces that are on the ground there right now. Um, I think that one of, the, one of the phrases that stood out for me, as, as we just mentioned, was this use uh, the, the president made of the phrase, the, the big price that will have to be paid for this. What do you think is the kind of price that Americans are prepared to pay to deal with this situation. It feels to me like what, 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 if I'm just guessing what people are looking for, it's something like enough action to stop this monstrous dictator, but not get ourselves involved in another um, war in the Middle East. How do you think the president should balance those two considerations? Well, you're right. There, there's not an appetite uh, to have uh, a ground, a protracted war in that, in that region, particularly in that area. And part of the reason there's not is because there's not an obvious victory that you could attain given all the negative forces on the ground. Uh, the president last year struck Assad. He did that very decisively. He may be looking at uh, some, some additional airstrikes. But I'll tell you, if you're going to worry about Iran and you're going to take action against Iran, I mean, one of the ways to do that is to sock them with some of the sanctions that we used to have on there. This may be a way uh, to get some of our European partners to finally realize, you know, this Iran deal has not improved things in the Middle East. Iran is still engaged in all kinds of nefarious activities, and let's hit them where it hurts, in their pocketbook. So you may see a kinetic strike, but I think some of the stuff that you can do directly to Iran on that front uh, would probably be more effective in the long run. And, of course, John Bolton, who starts tomorrow as national security advisor, has always been very tough on Iran, so that's an interesting take there. I just want to get your reaction to something that John McCain said today. If effectively, he blamed the president for this latest attack, saying that it was a response to the president indicating last week that basically we should get out of Syria. He said that this attack came in response to that. What, what have you got to say to John McCain um, for bringing that aspect into the uh, situation today? It's completely unfounded speculation. And with all due respect to Senator McCain, I mean, he's constantly harping on President Trump. And, you know, when he does that, I just, uh, I lose a lot of interest because he, he does have a valuable perspective in certain respects, but he just can't help himself. He's always trying to knock the president. So um, there's so much more to talk about that issue, uh, but, and we'll see what evolves in the next um, in the next few days. But just while you're here, I'd love to get your take on another really big issue that we're going to be debating tonight, which is immigration and the border. And, and you um, tweeted earlier um, about this situation with the caravan of migrants. That the, that's something that you're going to be addressing in Congress. Just tell us briefly what you're thinking on that issue is. Well, we're, gonna, we're doing a hearing on my, on my national security subcommittee. We're going to have people from the administration, also have some analysts. What we want to do is make sure that we actually have a border, that the president has all the tools he needs uh, to be able to prevent these mass waves of illegal immigration. And I think that there are a lot of things the president can do, and I think this president's willing to do a lot of things to, to get this right. Congressman, thank you so much for that. Um, good to see you as always.